All right, it is a beautiful late spring day. Looks like we just got a very light spattering of rain. Doesn't look like it made its way through the canopy though. And I'm riding the new Da Vinci Chainsaw. This is the GX version. It's got a 170 millimeter travel up front, 170 in the rear. They're using a high pivot, split pivot suspension layout. It seems like uh, creating this bike in partnership with Steve Smith's mom. They really wanted to honor the uh, chainsaw legacy. They went a cool direction with this. Hand welding a, can a Canadian made frame together and uh, kind of hitting a price point. That allows more people to get into a bike like this. Kind of uh, capitalizes on the chainsaw name, but in a way that we can get more kids stoked about riding and uh, more people on a budget. When uh, climbing this bike, the geometry is really just exceptional for the way I like bikes to feel these days. You got a super forward seated position. Nice long reach, of course. But uh, the balance between the chainstay length at 435, the reach, and the uh, seat tube angle just puts you like so far forward. And when you're climbing, you just have your weight really balanced so you can stay in a comfortable position, not have to move your weight around, just kind of sit and spin. Seems to me like out here on the West Coast, we've got steep climbs and tell you what, that forward seat position just never feels wrong. This bike also has really excellent kind of anti-squat characteristics. I've noticed that a lot of the high pivot bikes seem to have really great pedaling kinematics. Really use the chain to kind of prop up the rear shock while you're climbing, keep things uh, neutral. However, this bike is definitely not gonna be the fastest up the hill. <clears throat> they spec this bike with a Maxxis uh, double down casing on the rear and uh, 3C Max Grip rear rubber. So that tire on its own can be a little draggy, especially for heavier individuals like myself. And uh, also I think the extra chain drag from the additional pulley sprocket, you know, it doesn't take too much in the way of resistance to leave an impact on uh, the kind of perceived drag for me in this bike certainly kind of has that same high pivot dynamic where a really good anti-squat, great forward thinking geometry makes you feel ridiculously comfortable while climbing and then extra drag. So you kind of suffer a little harder, but you're in a very comfortable position to do so. And you just, Winch your way to the top. Time for the good part. Ew. Yeah, this bike definitely seems to have that kind of like big bike presence. Just feels uh, like it's comfortable, comfortable to be like sent pretty fast and ferociously into kind of scary features. <clears throat> That rear end just feels like super like soppy and like it's soaking everything up. That rear end just gets like deep into the travel like fairly easy, which I think is such a good way to have the curb on a 170 millimeter bike, you know. Might as well use that travel if you've got it. Get nice and deep. Yeah, this bike's got just a really fun feeling rear suspension curve. Just real active. It's deep in it. 
think this bike I've had like a little bit harder time like putting my finger on any attributes that make it feel like a high pivot. It just feels like that rear end uh, is just super active. <clears throat> and it's incredible to me like how good the uh, kind of last generation Zeb and Super Deluxe feel. Sorry. It doesn't have like the longest chain stay either, so it's pretty playful. And yeah, you just feel like, I think sometimes with the like aluminum frames too, they just eat up a little bit more like craziness. Woo! I <laughs> squared that one up. And uh, this bike is no exception. I feel like there's a bit of an aluminum ride quality to it. it just feels nice and soft and capable. You can still like uh, push it into stuff to pop out of it. Wow, yeah, I got quite a bit of pop there. Um, yeah, the rear end also feels like quite stable without being like harsh feels like it's uh, staying put back there and uh, like trustworthy for me to throw my weight into it and kind of slap the rear end around. It's just got that nice like chunky feel to it. It's like a little bit, you know, a heavier feeling bike sometimes, like going to pull it up. Wow, yeah, track's so good though. It's a great feeling. Got that double down casing on the rear. Super nice. And uh, max grip. Kind of a weird thing about this bike is uh, having the max grip on the rear with the uh, max tear on the front, which I don't love because I usually like to have more grip in the front than the rear. But uh, not a huge deal. Just kind of a weird thing. Wow. Got like a ton of pop out of that one too. I think when you get to the end of this stroke, there's quite the ramp up. Yeah, this is the kind of straight open section that I feel like this bike just loves to eat up. Just feel like you can kind of hang on and let the chainsaw do the work. Ooh, glad that rock's dry today. Yeah, to me, this bike just feels like really uh, kind of free ride or uh, downhill oriented. It's kind of like heavy and a little bit more bike to pick up. I don't know if that's just the uh, kind of aluminum construction or whatever, but yeah, but then you just like send it into stuff and it just feels like uh, you get almost like a little bit of that e-bike plow factor, like dirt bike plow factor, downhill bike. Or just, yeah, right there, my God. Just eat stuff up. Really doesn't get bucked off of line very easily at all. Just feels like a heavyweight uh, contender. Doesn't get pushed around very easily. Then you get it airborne and feels super graceful. Yeah, it just kind of loves this loose stuff so much. It really feels like if you can just uh, stay behind these bars, this bike is gonna take it and you're gonna come out the other side of whatever you get yourself into. Just fine. <laughs> oh man. Woo, watch out birds. Such a fun, fun thing to be on. Uh, another really interesting thing about this kind of like build is how good these G2 RS brakes are. To be honest, I tried a couple G2 brakes and I was a little concerned uh, coming into this bike. But whoa, they have like such a definitive bite point and uh, are actually a heck of a brake. Really like easy for me to tell how deep I am uh, into the kind of lever and easier to have a little bit more control. So uh, kudos 
to SRAM for making these things feel so good. And I've been such a fan of, you know, the last few generations of RockShox suspension, but so fun on a more budget oriented bike, not top end spec fork to feel how dang good these are still. And uh, also I found this bike to be super quiet. I think the high pivot bikes with the extra pulleys can kind of like control that a little bit better. But yeah, nice and quiet. Yeah, it's interesting. This thing feels like such a kind of a heavyweight contender, like a downhill bike or something. Uh, but it also has like a pretty manageable uh, sized rear chainstay. They changed the chainstays across the sizes, which is super wise. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's still got a little bit of flickiness to it. You know, not less so from like the weight side of things, which the heavy weight actually feels great downhill and just punching through chunder. But, uh, you. Oh man, got so deep into that rear travel there. It felt so good. But that uh, rear end is still so manageable. You. <laughs> man, I feel like I'm just kind of airing stuff a little bit higher on this rig today. It's that free ride spirit of the chainsaw. Love it. So who's this bike for? I'd say this bike is for the kind of, you know, hard hitting rider that's somewhat budget focused, looking for that big travel uh, experience and high end kind of like suspension kinematics. And uh, I could just picture like a lot of high schoolers and college kids loving this bike. I could see this bike getting pushed up the slopes of Virgin, Utah. And young Groms getting gnarly on it. And of course, like downhill races and that kind of thing. This bike uh, definitely knows how to plow through the chunk and keep its composure. So if you like the review, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And for the full write-up, head on over to Freehub Mag dot com. Woo! Yeah.